I have zero friends, zero distractions, zero masks, zero bad intentions, zero jealousy. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So first of all, yes, I have no friends. I'm 35. I have no friends. Can we normalize this, please? Can we just understand that at different phases in our life, we may not have friends around us? Doesn't mean to say I've never had friends before. I have. But they go. And sometimes you have to learn to let go of friends that are not aligned to where you are on your path, your journey, and your phase of life. And that's okay. That's totally okay. And if you're there with zero friends, I don't want you to feel bad. I don't want you to feel like you failed in society as a kind, empathic person that can communicate with people. You can, okay? There are just different phases in your life that maybe require you to have zero friends right now. So, but let's talk about like zero distractions first. Let's talk about why, by me having no friends, how it's helped my focus, basically. It's totally shifted my mind, my energy, and it's allowed me to focus on things just like this. My hobbies, my passion, going towards things that I love. Zero distractions. Friends can distract you. We have to understand that if you've aligned yourself with a low quality friend, which may not be consciously chosen, but maybe on a subconscious level have been attracted to you because you were in a low, you know, vibration at that phase of your life. So subsequently you've maybe attracted these kind of friendships into your life, or you maybe have just consciously, consciously chosen friends like this. Um, that have just provided you distractions. Let me tell you, um, now this is not all friends, okay? But I'm saying that friends can be a place of distraction. It's mentally quite draining, based on my experience, to have to pour so much energy to sustain a friendship. It's mentally another job. And if we're talking about cognitively, like how we are um, dispersing our resources out there to what we're deciding what we're going to spend time on, you know, our brain needs a moment where it can relax, where it can have time back to itself, where it can just totally unwind and have solitary moment of peace and no distractions your brain actually needs it your brain needs a moment of whoa I need a break here and unfortunately we're in a society where um obviously the definition I don't know of everyone's definition of friends is very different but it feels to me that there's a lot of pressure with friendships that you have to constantly be doing this doing that doing lots of things to show everyone that you are friends and to show others that you are friends to show society that we're doing things we're doing activities we're doing this we're doing that we're doing that and it can become a quite constant um thing to sustain over a long period of time and you can gradually get i feel like get sucked into this um constant um just of always having to adhere to certain events certain things to have to and pressures you have to go to and I, I I'm just personally for me I found it quite distracting to have friends I found it, it pulls my energy away and it doesn't allow me to focus on things that I truly care about and I'm not saying that I never cared about things that I previously did do with friends I had before it's just that it distracted me a lot and took my energy away from things that I actually really wanted to pour into and I have found personally with having no friends and this has been quite a few years now having no friends and living by myself that I've been able to hone in and I've been able to actually focus on things that I'm actually passionate about and I've actually wanted to do and I didn't realize like why for so long why why haven't you done the things that you said you're going to do? And I've noticed, if I look back over the years, that I just completely mentally drained. Like my energy 
is totally drained from having lots of friends. And for me, I find this very peaceful. I find that I'm in the bo- the best mental like brain space that I've actually been in for a long time and that's having no friends. I feel less pressure. I feel I can focus on the things I want to without feeling guilty and actually just without having to explain myself. And I find that there's a lot of us here that you'll find that the less friends that you have, you'll find that you'll be able to be more productive. Your mind, like your brain, will be able to focus more on the things that you want to, even like at work or even just in your own relationships that you have. Maybe you'll be able to have more energy to pour into those things. But I will say, I'm not too sure about the men dynamic friendship groups, but women friendship group dynamics, I find them to be quite draining and um, full of pressure um, from many different areas of pressure. And um, yeah, so, you know, what you will find, I believe that if, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I can only go based on my experience, my real lived experience here of having friends and then having no friends. And I've realized I don't have distractions. I zero, I have zero distractions, literally zero distractions. Now, if I'm procrastinating or distracting myself, it's purely down to me. It's me that's distracting me. It's me that's procrastinating me. But there's no one else. There's there's no control of anyone else distracting me away from anything that I want to do or my energy um, to the things that I want to do. And I find that so freeing. Um, it's very peaceful. It's the pressure. It's like, it, it totally feels like, like, you know, that heavy feeling on your shoulders. It's just like taken away from you. It's like, like you can breathe and your brain is like, thank you. I needed this space of like solitary and just away from everything to like figure out what the hell's going on here. So yeah, zero friends gives you zero distractions. You will have zero distractions. You, trust me, you will be able to, you will find that you're the most productive. I honestly believe that you will be more productive with less friends. And it's not necessarily like, I don't know if they're necessarily trying to distract you. It's just a societal pressure that it's been defined that when we have friends, we should be doing this X, Y, and Z. These are the things that a friendship should be doing. We should be going here. We should be out about doing this, doing that. Da, 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 da. And we should um, conform and we should pour our energy into those friendship groups. Because if we don't, you're not normal. You're a red flag. There's something wrong with you if you don't have friends. Um, now, I'm not here advocating like, oh, just go out having no friends and don't communicate with anyone in your life and that's how you should live life. No, I think we are human beings and there's a definite salient need for us to have human interaction, human connection. This is very important. But what I'm saying is, is that we have to be very wise on the friends that we're choosing. And if they are providing a space that we mentally feel drained, we mentally feel exhausted and that the pressure of every time we have to meet with these friends and do these activities and do these things and just the just the pressure be- even beforehand going to these places, you know, to me, it was very stressful. It was draining just the thought of it and I don't need to think about that anymore I don't need to have that pressure I don't have that distraction I can just focus on the things I want to do and it's so peaceful let me know if this relates to you I also have found that having zero distractions has reduced my stress levels impeccably I feel less less stressed and let's talk about zero masks so basically we live in a society where we have to conform a certain way our friends people can perceive us a certain way depending on what behaviors we give out 
how we um, behave, how we act, how we present ourselves. We're going to be perceived differently. And we um, basically have a metric um, according to society and societal norms of what is deemed as um, presentable, not presentable, good, bad, etc, etc. Competent, not competent. Um, And I think with having less friends, in my opinion, um, it's allowed me to um, not have the need to wear a mask around anyone. Not like I have before anyway, but I feel like, to a certain extent, like I would probably not voice things as much as things I'm voicing now that I would want to because I know it's not probably deemed as societally acceptable or normal I love this concept behind me always is a concept um from like Taoist Chinese philosophy and it talks about always is the art of non-action it's basically just going with the flow of life in its natural state and I think having zero masks and being in solitude, it allows you to be in the art of non-action. When you're in solitude, there is no action for you to have to cut, to conform to a society, to put up a mask, to conform to autonomy, to conform to anything. You can get rid of all this. You can just be yourself fully yourself in the in, when you're in a solitary like solitary self you can really just drop everything and just be really aligning with the flow of life of naturally who you are without the pressure without the metrics without the looks without the standards without this 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 you can just be you but that's why i have it there always I love this concept because even in the area of we're talking about zero distractions, it totally allows you to go into within the flow of who you are. It allows you to be self-aware in your natural state of who you are. You are going to find that with less friends and you're just here by yourself, you have to just find who you are. It will just you will find yourself being way more self-aware than you've ever been in your life. I have found that I'm so more self-aware of who I am with the less influence, less friends around me, less conformity, less um, judgment, less everything. I have found that with that solitary, it's allowed me to seek my self-awareness, to increase my self-awareness and to really truly understand who I am. It's hard just to be your true true self um when there's so many like so many different judgments like red flag this person you're this you're that you know all these negative things it's so hard um to just be yourself um when it when they say having zero friends is not one that would allow you to 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 flourish and actually I think it does allow you to flourish in a in a temporary uh, even if it's temporary or long term I feel like it really allows you to figure out who you are more and to be more in tune with yourself um you know it's very hard for most people to drop a mask when they're trying to conform to a societal norm you know and um you know, and it doesn't allow for strong opinions. It doesn't allow for the truth so much. The truth serum, as I said before in my other videos, like if you're in a group dynamic and you have an opinion that doesn't necessarily agree with the um, with the group, you're automatically um, eliminating yourself to be unlikable in that group and a problem. And um, maybe you had a really, you know, an opinion that was actually different and it could have caused um, a conversation for a deeper discussion. But, you know, it's very hard for most people to, to, to be accepting of that when there's a group that have one way and you want to go another way. It doesn't mean you're combative. It just means there's a difference in opinion. And we are individuals. We're human beings. We're allowed to have opinions. Um, so, you know, these zero masks, 
you know, the zero friends, zero masks, it just allows you to be who you are, you know, without having to put on anything. Let's talk about zero jealousy. So me having zero friends, obviously I have zero jealousy around me because I have no friends <laughs> around me. And I'm not saying like all friends automatically would give you jealousy, but I'm just saying it's not in a realm of my energy, my environment, where I am, because I don't have that around me um, unless I'm jealous of myself, which, you know, that's not happening right now. <laughs> but let's get back to it. So friends and jealousy, this comes from a deep core of insecurity. Um, the reason why friends can be jealous, I think, sometimes is they're deeply, they're insecure and um, they compare themselves a lot. And this is a natural thing for us to compare ourselves I've done it, you've done it, we've all done it. We've all compared ourselves to someone. So it's not like it's just an easy thing just to not compare yourself to someone. And I think it takes a lot of self-awareness, a lot of inner work, a lot of um, actually time alone for you to understand actually um, comparing myself is actually doing me more harm than good. It's actually doing us more harm than good. And, you know, kind of indoctrinated in a way from a very young age to have this sense of competitiveness this is just men and women and men and um, the sense of competitiveness the sense of comparison the sense of um you know measuring metrics against each other's based on our um i don't know societal competence let's just say um this could be based from looks this can be based from intelligence this could be based on um your what you're wearing perception anything and so that's always been an element of um, within our lives, okay? But what I have found um, is that if we've gone to adulthood and we're extremely jealous of someone, um, I don't think it's a them problem. I think it's an inner problem um, within ourselves. It's, a, it's an insecurity within ourselves if we're looking at someone and we're jealous. And I think, why would we be jealous? You know, I think we need to look at it as we can be ad admirable of someone if that's if that's what we're trying to do here. Um, but jealousy is really it's it's a really comparison. Jealousy it can come from many forms, from material things to what they own, who they're with, you know. And it comes to a place of, you know, what they own, what bag they have, what this, why don't I have it? Why don't I have this? Why do, why do they have it? And I don't have it. And, um, you know, that kind of mentality of why don't I have it? And why do they have it? Um, that's not the kind of energy I would want to associate myself with. Um, and I feel like jealousy just comes from a state of comparison of things and stuff um it's just stuff they're comparing and i don't know how much value that has um in 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 warranting a healthy high quality friendship um yeah so if you find that there has been jealousy in your friendships um you're just gonna understand that maybe that person is a really um you know, just not there within themselves yet um, to give you that kind of friend that you need. And maybe they need to go on their internal journey to figure out what is making them so insecure, um, to make them jealous of you, of what you have, as opposed to celebrating you. Um, and I think a healed friend would celebrate you, uh, celebrate your success, celebrate what you've got. And actually, it allows you to actually form, I think, a deeper friendship. You know, um, to be able to share that positivity within friends is is wonderful. And, you know, but sometimes we have jealous friends. It could be based on your looks, could be based on any multiple multitude of different things. And I have found, just based on my experience, that I've experienced this, I'm sure you have as well. And, um, yes, and it may not be obvious, but there are 
slightly like little nuances that you can see within your friendship that you just you can feel it and it doesn't feel good and so I'd rather not have that around me um and you know I have found me having less friends I just don't have that around me and um yeah and again way the concept um also talks about the focus of um not focusing on external validation, not focusing on others, but actually focusing the attention purely on yourself, purely on your path, purely where you're going and to know oneself. And it's not about um, comparing yourself. It's actually the art of non-comparison. And it's a beautiful concept because the moment you just don't compare yourself and you just literally focus on yourself, you literally do not have to compare yourself to anyone. You know, you're on your own path. Um, and the moment you start doing that, you're just going to get no benefit from it. The main thing is you just focus on yourself and focus on where you're going. Um, and yes, it's hard. I do it sometimes. You know, I even compare myself. Like I'm 35, I've got new kids. Da, da, da. I, I find myself. And then, you know what? Recently, I've just come to the, the point of, you know, just just let it go. You know, I'm getting nothing from comparing myself here. All I'm doing is creating an, a, a feeling of um, panic and negativity here. And um, yeah, so, you know, and that's what happens when um, you may have jealous friends. It's just a, f- a fear of you doing better and them not achieving that as well. And I've just found less friends. I just don't have that. And lastly, I want to talk about zero bad intentions. Now, I feel that this is like a little bit different to jealousy. I feel jealousy is the core root comes from insecurity. But I feel like bad intentions is a conscious, purposeful and um, a little bit manipulative kind of thing that can happen within friendships. And what I mean is bad intentions could be something like bad advice purposely giving you bad advice I've experienced this where you maybe it could be something such as simple as you're wearing an outfit or your makeup or should you do this about someone you're dating or someone you're going or somewhere should this be and you ask your friend and maybe you're naive and you're you're understanding at that point I, I've been naive in many occasions of different phases of my life and you ask your friend because you're coming from like a pure intention here, you would give them like a good advice, good, you know, you'd give them good advice, etc, etc. And they give you the wrong advice. They give you, they give you advice that would purposely sabotage you in a way to make you look less than um, and not better than. And I think I'm not saying like I've experienced this all the time, but I'm saying that with less friends, zero friends, I know that I have just the best of intentions for myself. And that is it. I only have the best of intentions for myself. No one can sway me or influence me or put me in a situation where I've taken the advice naively and been influenced to go a certain path. And... And, you know, certain paths can lead you down different places, you know. And um, so, yeah, I think what I've learned is that with zero friends, you have zero bad intentions. You know that whatever advice you're giving yourself, you're giving yourself. You have to trust yourself. There's no validation of external things. There's no kind of bad energy coming in. You literally have just got the purest intentions for yourself. And... um, Now, I know I've made out to sound like friends are the worst thing ever. No, they're not. But I think it's about understanding how friendships can impact these different things we've spoken about, like having zero distractions, zero masks, you know, um, zero jealousy, zero bad intentions. And it's important for us to like, just have a look at these different things and figure out, do my friends like have these things do do I need to sit down like how you would was like if you're choosing a partner or something like write down the pros and cons write down like you know you need to have be looking at these friendships and understanding where are they helping you and where they're hurting you and if they're hurting you more than they're helping you then I would seriously look into 
into that. Um, but I found at this phase in my life, I found at this phase in my life, I've been the most peaceful and I have zero friends. So I don't know, there's a quite strong correlation to zero friends and peace with me. I don't know about you, whether you, when you have zero friends, you feel more peace, you feel like you have more energy, you feel like you're less stressed, you feel less drained, let me know. But I hope that, um, like, going forward, again, I'm not here to advocate friends, no friends, but I'm here to normalise the fact that there may be phases in our life where we don't have no friends, and that's absolutely fine. And we don't talk about it enough, and I'm happy to talk about it as someone that has no friends, and the reasons why. It doesn't always have to be a negative one, but we have to look at the different things that formulate to why maybe we have no friends. And then also you know, going forward, friends can be a, an amazing thing. Um, I just think, you know, the more you get to know yourself, which at one phase of your life, I feel like having no friends and zero distractions, zero things, allows you to know yourself. It allows you to know yourself and then align with a natural flow of people that will just come to you, that align with who you are at that phase. And um, so you eventually will find friends that, you know, are just more in sync with you vibrationally, um, just every in every sense. And um, and in that sense, having high quality friends like that, that are more healed, that they know themselves, that you've attracted into your life because you've become more healed. I think those kind of friendships will be amazing. And I hope that we all find that friend, even just one. And I'm hopeful that, you know, we will find that. Um, but right now, if we've got zero friends, it's fine. But if you have that friend that, or you, those friends that are high quality, let us know. Let us know in the comments below if you've experienced, you know, some of the things I'm talking about, like distractions, you felt distracted, you felt jealousy, you felt these things, let me know. And how are you feeling now, you know? Um, just let me know. And um, once again, I do want to, just want to say, friends can be very beneficial to your life when we find high quality friends that are truly healed within themselves and how do we find that I feel like once we become more healed we were naturally aligned to those that are more healed and um you know there are friends out there that are not jealous are not envious are not those things I know they are and so um you know it's probably all these women in the comments that are gonna comment um you're probably those women <laughs> so please comment below and um maybe hopefully one day we can meet each other because I would love that because I know these women in these comments and men sorry I know if you have that thinking as well your our minds are oh yeah anyway tell me what you think did you like this video and uh yeah comment below love you all and um yeah if you want to subscribe subscribe if you don't, don't, if you do, but this is a community, this is the Nala Journey community, we're a family here, and, you know, we're friends here, love you all.